Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are dropping in very hot to the draft. Just to let you know what was banned away, we do have the J. Sumi and the Graves, the Lisa and the Twist of Fate, and the Jarvan were taken off the board. It was another first pick, LeBlanc, walking straight into that one once again, as we do have a Felios Lissandra as exactly the same answers. And Will is going to change things up with a Viking into the jungle. Gentlemen. Are you sure it's not a bug and this isn't the exact same draft from last, uh, last game? Or did I put the wrong thing up here? Because this looks very familiar. Well, they're hovering in Olaf, so I think that's a change. That's a different one so far, but I gotta say it's a little bit worrying that this draft is going to look almost exactly the same because this was, as was pointed out by the desk, the worst of the two games for Honolite B Sports. A big blue side to get it. They're rolling it back. <laughs> At least the Olaf is different, but is it better? Because I'm thinking no I, at the I, moment. No, I, I, you can't I, be steadfast I, presence, dude. Yes, I actually think Olaf is better. I think Olaf has an early window against Poppy. I think true damage helps a lot in cutting through her resistances, especially when she's low. I do not like the Varus. Uh, not, not, not the biggest fan of that. And I was kind of worried that we were going to see Chovy run into the same situation where he does not get to play the video game. Fortunately for him, uh, instead they are going to pivot away, not wanting to play the Poppy into the Olaf, so that pick actually doing its job and picking up the talent instead. The amount of backline dive already available for T1 right now would terrify me from our life. Our life also clearly not kind of buying into the whole scaling thing. I like, no, 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 we're it, not doing that early I, game. I wonder if we'll just see another ban on uh, Kana's top side of the map here in terms of the cannon we've been seeing so much from him and that, that would make a lot of sense they took the gwen away this time so that's not going to be an option here and there still is counter pick potential here for morgan if yeah he I, waits. Think, I think cannon also fits into to. this t1 roster like so incredibly well right now yeah so you, you've got to ban, ban that right i mean there's there's no question here I think they're they're not hovering or waiting this. They're trying to use this time to discuss options as to what Morgan wants to play because I think this is a cannon ban no matter what, 100%. And there it is. But for Hunt Life Esports, I mean, this comp can break through the front line a little bit better. You still have the same poke strengths that we mentioned before, but Thresh here going to make it very easy to disengage. A lot more safety here with this. And last time, you know, this, this composition ran into T1 having a lot better fights around the Rift Herald. That was the big thing that set things off on the wrong foot for Honolulu Esports. If they can get the edge there this time around, things could change. They're going to get the Braum themselves, it looks like here. Yep, and uh, th that's okay though, right? Like T1, they knew that they were giving over Braum. Braum was fantastic in the last game, but I think Carrier has looked the best in his entire career on the Thresh and played so beautifully in game number one, navigating the map and making sure that everyone was in the right position. So Hanwha, they're going to lock in probably Renekton right here, and we'll just have to see whether or not that uh, first Herald fight is actually going to go their way. I understand Hanwha's plight, because uh, while I think that it might seem foolish, yeah, of course, they're an accident. Like, yeah. it might seem that foolish. wasn't a prediction. That no. was just what you was going to happen. We, we all knew. Yeah. Um, it might seem foolish to try exactly the same thing again, but I kind of respect Hanwha's goal to identify, like, we are not winning mid to late game against T1. Like, we can draft scaling. It's not going to matter. And we've already seen what can happen if a Fiora gets a lead early on. Birdo was on the receiving end of Ale's Fiora, and it was the biggest gap that we've seen in the entirety. Yeah, but of this is an this LCK not... versus LCK. Nah, so it is R5 Nar. That's how it's supposed to work. I, I like this Nar actually a lot better. I know it's not as fun as what you guys were maybe hoping for in that Fiora pick here, but it does give you a lot of late game engage potential, and it can slow down the game. If Honolite Esports get a lead early, you know, this is one of those things you can kind of shore up your late game team fights with if it's not the one sided game we saw in game two. Another pick that I would have liked here would have been the Gangplank as well. I think it could have been very strong here into the Renekton. You play it slow, you have a lot of global presence, and then later on you have extra scaling with the Cephelios. They go with the Nar here, and it is a matchup where if you have a, a different champion than an Olaf with CC or like an Italy, you could blow up the Nar and collapse there, but I don't think it's going to happen in this game. You're still playing LeBlanc and two melee junglers into Aphelios, Fresh, and Lissandra. Yeah. But I'm, I... I also just like, if you look at the Nah from a teamfight perspective as well, it does make uh, Chovy's life even worse, right? Like, if you are Mega Nah, then like Chovy dives in, you're trying to get some distort poke, and then you just get smacked into a wall, walloped, altered by a faker. Like, Everyone chain CCs you and then you're wiped off the rift. And then if Chovy's wiped off the rift, 
do Hanwha have any other answers? I mean, is this Varus actually going to do something this game? That's what we need to see. We need to see Deft actually wake up and do something in this series. It would be such a tragedy if Honda Life Esports go out 0-3, but by basically playing two different versions of the same composition here in games two and three. Again, I, I think a lot of that last game really turned when that Blast Cone was destroyed. Morgan didn't get to team fight, and they got totally destroyed on the Rift Herald, and T1 got a ton of vision control. So much extra gold pumped into this Gwen early on, who ended up going 5-1, and one, I believe it was, at the end of the game. That's not going to happen probably this time around. So we'll be a very different game. The question is, can Hanoli Esports get an early advantage? Well, they are going to try, and uh, this would definitely be an early advantage. We are sub one minute, and already we've got uh, Hanwha going on a bit of an excursion into the enemy jungle. It's a bit lonely in there, though, as T1. Just going to allow them to get a cheeky little ward on the Krug camp here and make their way back out again. And think back to Chovy and Deft last year, right, on DRX, where they were also able to make quarterfinals. Yeah. Uh, and then we all know what happened. They drew Dom on Kia. Yeah, I don't, I don't like remembering no, that series. No, but that I think, I think we need to because uh, I think that DRX as a whole was a team that did a lot better than expected as well, similar to what we've seen from Hanwha. And there are three then, players from that that yeah. uh, that team in this series. And yeah. One of them is very, very happy. And one the of them is feeling great. Not. He's up 2-0 in yeah. quarters, about to reach uh, the semifinals if they can find a win here in carry of course. Let's not, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, although I think you're allowed to get a bit ahead of yourself a little based bit. on just yeah, how just incredibly dominant T1 were. Like, I was thinking that this is the time where I should be talking about, well, Anwar have come... But, like, no. T1 are just showing that they are so much better. And we're going to need an absolutely incredible change of form here from Hama Life Esports if they're going to stand any sort of chance. I think it's important to draw those parallels, though, and I think it is important to remember uh, the history of players like Deft and Trovi who have been so close uh, for so long but have never really been able to cross the finish line because in Korea, historically speaking, there have been one or two extremely dominant teams, and that was not Hama Life Esports, and it was, it was DRX, actually, last yeah. year uh, as the number two, but they hit number one in the quarterfinals. So it has been a, a really unfortunate luck of the draw for these two star players in Chovy and Deft. Well, Faker and Chovy just trading a little bit here as Will is going to take down some uh, Raptors. His carrier almost gets stunned, but is going to be all right towards the end. And Deft should have more avenues to get work done uh, in this game. The door is very annoying. So at least Varus is going to be uh, a little bit more of a champion as uh, Chovy misses the chains. Great circle of frost there from Faker just to make sure that Chovy's life is as difficult as possible. We'll see if Unlife Esports decide to because they have Pryo in bottom lane. Remember, we talked about what Vista could do on the Nautilus to threaten Faker. We saw some roams up there. But with this composition, what you can do with the Olaf is also try to threaten an early Drake with some of that Pryo because Olaf can clear, clear it pretty quickly. I'd love to see something like that to try to get that objective on the board early. So what's so interesting is that due to the fact where that ward initially was placed, they don't actually have intel where owner is definitively, I don't think. I uh, also see the, in the, the advantage that Olaf has where he's able to clear a lot faster, uh, able to actually full clear his entire jungle as opposed to uh, Willa being a full camp behind. And this is exactly what I'd love to see, honestly. Like, but the problem is the, the wave isn't there, right? Like Gumayushi and Kari have been doing a great job. This is the type of avenue that you're looking towards. Whaler diving there, maybe Chovy teleports in. Like, that's what you need to do as Hanba if you want to stand a chance in this game. Yeah, this is the first time Willa's had any sort of tempo advantage. And it's taken picking the Olaf, the yeah. most, like, quintessential speed clear jungler that we still have remaining. Um, so thankfully, he's able to utilize that in order to get himself, you know, a little bit further ahead as far as the jungle clear and things like that, already back out onto the map. Um, but Ono doing a very good job, to be perfectly honest, is Morgan diving on in. Kana gets the Mega Nar at exactly the right time. Got to be careful about going in on those Mega Nars, <laughs> especially yeah. as uh, a player, Morgan, who has fallen behind in lane quite a bit in this tournament. As Chovy is going to continue to be very annoying. But we are reaching that, that timing window, you know, right, where, where you're going to see a play from Willer with a clear advantage. Uh-oh. That's a point-blank hook. Deft actually taking the majority of the damage, though, as Gumiushi taking his opportunity. And Carrier, damn, he just he just knows what to do to make sure the lane's in the right spot. And I normally would think that things like Lethality Varus are pretty good when it comes to uh, holding onto a lane. But uh, yeah, this Thresher Felios is looking like they're 
early game spiking, mid game spiking, late game damage carries. Yes, and th this has, uh, in my opinion, been a recurring theme for the LCK. I think they have prioritized the Aphelios the highest. Uh, we have seen the Aphelios Lulu also coming up from a team like Damwon. <sighs> Those chains hit, this is a totally yeah. different scenario. Yeah. Rake comes through there from Ona, as well as going to say thank you. Now I attack a little bit faster and can get through my jungle more effectively. T1 are just one step ahead. They know there's a timing where the Drake could be tested, and, you know, they're just collapsing in here. Faker's back timing was so perfect. Teleports back to lane here. And now you can't make that Olaf Drake play anymore with the prior that you would have had, which they didn't even really have because the bot exchange went so poorly for Deft and Vista just moments ago. And uh, once again, Hanalei Esports struggling in the early game. Level six for Chovy. Yep. And, and this is exactly the type of place that I need to see Hanalei go in on, right? And like, that, that is what they need to do. Like, you can't just sit back, look at a situation like that and say, it's a bit risky. Yeah, it is, but not doing anything is going to become a way worse problem for you. You've seen what it leads to later on. And first, the dive opportunity on both sides, it wasn't great. But if you set it up a little bit better and actually commit to that, might get an opening there. Speaking Here, of which... This play, you're yeah. not getting anything out of the power of your Olaf early on. And Bromus was there as well. Well, he's walking down towards the bottom side. Something's happening because he's in the lane. Um, he's just doing his best Vista impression. So I guess, you know, both of them, for the audience, does make some sense. Just going to look for that early Drake. I mean, it wasn't the exact fastest you could have looked hoped for, but it still will be done before this Rift Herald. You know Carrier was out of lane. And you, you can see Faker right now, and, you know, Chovy can rotate back in, so there's no real contest opportunity here. This is one of the powers of early game Varus in a matchup like the Aphelios or like the Ezreal, who was picked in so much in the LCK, is you could just shove this out and guarantee the Olaf gets the first break. Now you have a slight advantage, a little bit of extra resistances here going into that upcoming fight. Plus, you can, if later on the game is fairly even, you can force those earlier Drake contest fights for Soul Point and the Soul itself. I really like the fake out there from Carrier to get a little bit more uh, assumed space for Gumiushi. You throw that land behind you and it has to be respected if Ona's position wasn't known. And it wasn't at that point in time. So really cute little play to make sure that Guma could still get as much of the farm as he wanted. And as you can see, is very, very even on that bottom side as Faker once again circling a frost in order to make sure that he stays absolutely fine and he's going to continue to do so, starting to win out on a lot of these trades against Chovy. Oh, okay, I take it all back. <laughs> we saw this exact same scenario last game and in game one, where Chovy's just constantly looking for the big harasses about 30 seconds before Rift Herald. Let's see how this Rift Herald fight goes compared to the last two. Yep. How many coins we got left? Um, <laughs> what side what, do we get? I, I don't even, I don't think it's it's a flip. It's like a dice roll, but when it's like one to five T1 win, and, and yeah. only the lucky six actually gets Han Wild. And this to me is one of the big differences between Han Wild and a lot of the other teams, even teams that we perceive as a little bit weaker, like Gen G, which is what do you actually do with the advantages that you gain? And Han my life just seemingly Ooh. not in a position to use the advantage that Chovy generates, right? I think if this is... I keep... Morgan, you... Know. Yeah, it's almost okay. a fight happening. Thank but, you. Uh, yeah. I don't think you need to, to throw it to me for that one. I was, I was just scared. Morgan taking a lot of free damage Pretty and then being not into a turret <laughs> but, and I mean, things look, like that. Free oh. Herald here. Yeah, it's going to be the first time that Hamar have got themselves a Rift Herald, so no fight. But look at uh, how where T1 really but... likes it, and instead they're just going to take a couple of plates on the bottom side. As yeah, Willa almost ignores the eye because he's not used to picking it up. This is how... not a thing that he's had to worry about. This is how you lose a Herald. <laughs> you get plates on the bottom side. You have the Crescentum for the Aphelios. This is how you want to play this situation as T1. We might have thought that it was Hanwha Life who was the actual uh, opponent here, but it's T1 and versus Rift Herald, yeah. and they finally realize that we don't need Rift Herald. We can just shove with a Thalios when he has Crescendum, and you've already won the trade. Yeah. No, if you get more than two plates, yeah. you're fine. Faker, as Faker almost solo killed by Chovy. Chovy wishing that he had have taken Ignite, um, as he has done so, but Hamwa immediately moving into the enemy jungle. So I, I do like this from Hamwa Life, showing that they are able to actually pivot around some form of advantage that they've been able to pick up, but... Doesn't quite work out there, as that was very cute. The rake going a very, very long way. Look at all the deep vision that they also gained with this play, because they brought owner bottom side. If Deft and Vista overstepped or made even one mistake during that top side play from Willer, they end up getting a kill as well, because at this stage of the game, Talon is so incredibly powerful versus something like a... <laughs> nice little hook here. <laughs> something like Avaris. And then now Vista has to clear all this deep vision. He's being tracked through jungle. While he's doing so, Gamusi gets free extra plates here in the bottom side of the map. And 
I mean, you're not really gaining anything else otherwise on the map right now is Hano Alive. So, yes, you got a Rift Herald for the first time here, but T1 still with a 900 gold lead at this stage. I don't think the Rift Herald is necessarily going to shore that up. No, it won't at all. But I love that T1 are now doing it, playing yeah. around something that isn't a Rift Herald. I because know. you don't have to get the Rift Herald in order to win the game. So this is absolutely perfect. T1 have shown that they've fixed almost everything that we've asked them to fix. Uh, that was the one glaring series. issue, right? Yeah. That was the one that, yeah. that was the one they Yeah, everything they about. needed to fix, uh, uh, we mean the one thing that they needed to fix was the predictable Rift Herald. Fights. We won't give away the answer to Dom One Kia yet until after they win the finals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Teleport gonna come through here. Chovy gonna look to harass, but yeah, it's this is the cute. best best of the three so far here for Hanalei Esports. Well, the hook's gonna come down. Vista still can get stunned up from this Gravitum as well, but Gumi Ishii taking a fair bit of damage there. Not gonna see what happens at the end though, as Will is going to make his way into the river, gets double raked and gets a thumbs up for it. Very, very nice, as that's a Gravitum stun that's going to land. The hook is gonna go completely wide though. That was an odd maneuver. Carrier gets stunned up. And now Will is making his way in, but Owner in perfect position. Do you want to fight a low health Olaf, though, is the question. And Owner's answer is absolutely. Yes, I would very much like to do that as Stand Beside Me comes on in. And Owner's going to get exhausted. That's the flash forward Owner thought. He'd done the calculation, but it doesn't quite work. Everyone's health bar is extraordinarily low, though. And T1 are closing in on this bottom side of the map. Deft. Yeah, Vista's going to have to cancel the back because he doesn't want to leave Deft alone. Is the rake's going to be avoided this time. Deft is going to flash get himself out of the way. Not a lot of summoner spells left remaining in first place. Blood goes to Gumi Yushi as oh, piercing arrow comes in, but there's a lantern, and so Kerry is gonna get him to safety. And there's nothing to be done, right? It's the exact same scenario. T1 is the one with a draft that, yeah, they can make, make proactive plays. They don't necessarily need to, but they get the shove. They put down the ward. Immediate teleport comes through from Kana, who has already set up with a big Narba. And now Faker teleports, catches the top side wave, makes sure that Morgan doesn't actually get the push going. That's you get the thing. first turret blood on your Aphelios. It's just disaster for Hanwha. If you can't get Faker's teleport here, you're not really winning out. And even if you did, you know, even if Morgan is able to get an extra plate or two here, this is Nephelios with Crescendum who can burst down that turret. He gets all plates and first turret, so 610 and extra gold going through. They get a Drake here. And, I mean, killing Faker with this rotation up here for Hanwai Esports is not realistic to expect. And T1 are already on the on the case. Well, Rift Herald comes down. Faker taking a bit of damage here. That Rift Herald placement. Yeah, that's an what? odd. That's definitely not the optimal placement there. As Kana's looking for the solo kill onto Chovy. Chains are going to connect those. There's the hyper proc. And Kana flashes. Gets the distortion. Man, that was so close to Chovy just being destroyed. That by Rift the top laners having the game, the, the day of his life right now. I mean, that Rift Herald was very, very optimistic, to say the least, team. <laughs> um, uh, that was not it. I mean, like, you can't look for a kill on the Faker. The rotation is fast for T1. They're just one step ahead of the macro yet again. I I'm pretty sure that I must have timed out. Otherwise, yeah, like a, posi it. a position a like issue. that, you're just not going to place it down, especially because you can read that the rotation from T1 is coming through, right? They've pushed in the bot side turret. They've done lane swaps every single game so far, even when the lane bot lane isn't pushed down. You see Gumayushi and carry our back so it's a completely obvious play and yet again i gotta give praise to Ona. the way that he also played that bot side skirmish how he knows his limit just oh, going God. in on an olaf like that like yeah sidestepping the prom winter's bite like there's so much control and confidence this is a rookie player owner is 17 years old this is his first wills appearance ever it's mind-blowing his first oh, it international is. event <laughs> like, and, and it's all of T1 doing it at the same time as well. This isn't like an outstanding performance by certain players, right? This is all of T1 yeah. stepping up. This is Carrier being, well, actually, he's not step, He's been stepping up all year. So it's I just normal. Exactly but normal step. Carrier is already amazing. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Faker, world class. We already know that. He's the greatest player of all time. But when you've got the other pieces of the team working this beautifully, this is... 100% finals contender yeah, T1 right this... here. Like, this is the first time this year that I've seen T1 be just as suffocating as they have in the past, in those glory days that we talk about. And, and it... maybe it's about being against Humble Life Esports, but if you're a T1 fan, you can be very happy about this as a glimpse to what could happen in the semifinals. Yeah, I mean, we... we did mention how close it was with Honda Life Esports in their groups against RNG, one of the big favorites, as Willer will track owner here. 
I'll just get out here <laughs> with the fine. ultimate. It's not even ships in the night. Like, Willa knew he was there. He's just like, well, no, I'm not going to be able to fight you. And Ona's like, oh, I can't fight you either. And then they just walk away. It's been, you know, two years since T1 have tried to put a fourth star on the jersey, right? And this feels to me a lot cleaner than 2019 T1 as Faker will sidestep the chain. Man, that looked a bit dangerous, but wasn't ultimately in the end because, of course, Faker still had the ultimate available. I, I think a lot of people look at what this part of the bracket is as Gumbuja. That's an aggressive spot. That'll answer to reach. Yep. He got the ward down, but he'd already clicked. So thankfully, Gumbuja is going to be able to make his way out. I think a lot of people look at this part of the bracket and think this is T1 winning to lose to Dom One Kia. But I look at this series, I look at their group stage performance, and I think. No, I think this we're is, for a good one. Yeah, I think uh, this is this is a world's winning T1 performance right now. However, that is getting way yeah, ahead of ourselves there's, there's, there's because still this, a... this series isn't even over yet. Rip and Shirley is now getting taken down. T1, let's see whether they can win this battle. Grabbing him comes on out. Chains of Corruption are going to be the answer. So that means Hanwa should be able to get Shirley, but the Moonlight Vigil comes down. That's stolen away though. Owner actually diving forward. Faker using his ult to make sure no one can get out. Death going to be the first victim. That's enough. Another one to go down as well, as unfortunately Will is not going to be out of Ragnarok that, and Chovy's still alive. But Morgan is his only teammate that's also there, and unfortunately it's not for too much longer. He needs to try and get through both Kana and Faker. Okay, fights continuing to erupt here. The flash has to come through because the return of the rake was going to be enough to get rid of Chovy, and he's getting closed in upon. Carrier actually gets it with the edge of the hook, and now it's only Morgan left as Deft and Vista have respawned. Feeling a little less, uh, little less, less bad about how premature we've been <laughs> about this series because the, what T1 is showing here is just utter dominance, right? Like, look oh, at yeah. how they set up the team fight. Uh, do you feel like? You know, there's also another quarterfinal to be played between Man and Dom Kia, which... Oh, no, but, like, if they hey, look, beats Dom on Kia, yeah, then that's no, no. an amazing set. Uh, all, I'm seeing is, uh, all I'm speaking of is the zeitgeist of the internet and what expectations are, right? And <laughs> no, no, because I, we could also see Mad Lions upset, but this is the X replay here. We're going to take a look at this fight where the close-in of this, this Aphelios with four roots, they're grabbing him up, and then the follow-up ultimate there, uh, from Vista is just so weak comparatively, and he's trapped on the other side trying to help Chovy out, and they just cut through. This is a team fight where it looked like maybe you've got the advantage, maybe you have positional advantage here as Hanalai Esports. Nope. He just presses R, and Gumi says it's over. <laughs> and yeah, we saw that happen too. <laughs> Honestly, as dis disjointed as Hanwha Life has looked, uh, I, I think there have been moments during group stage where they looked a bit more coherent. There have been moments where they looked a little bit more like this. Oh but man, that was as actually a beautiful passage of play from Chovy, but he's just by himself. And it's then a he metaphor, gets in the right? Face. For like the current state of Hanwha Life. Right, you just see yeah. all these moves, and it's cool. But in the end, it doesn't matter. But the cohesion and the team fight execution from T1 is—it's not on the level that we've seen from this far no. yet. And I think that's something that we keep going back to because we've seen this team struggle a lot in some, and this is we goes for basically every LCK team except, I guess, Gen G, ironically, <laughs> uh, who, who struggled only when playoffs actually came around. But T1. They had to change their lineup, or they have to change their lineup rather multiple times. They had coaching issues, they had to change their coaching staff uh, very abruptly. And to then see this level of cohesion and dominance in the quarterfinal at Worlds is... I think you pointed that out already, Atlas. Like, this is a much bigger achievement than you might think based on the 95 to 5% fan vote. Yeah, and I, I think that, like, we might have been getting ahead of ourselves, but also we've been waiting all year long for T1 to have that return to form, to have that moment. Maybe we've been waiting for longer than that, uh, but that can be debated. Depends on who T you ask, I suppose. Yeah, well, exactly. But, like, T1 fans have been waiting for this level of dominance from T1 for so, so long. So that's why we may be overstating it. Because it has been, like, finally we're breathing out after yeah. holding our breath to what feels like three years. Like I said, I mean, you got three stars on the jersey. Maybe this is the year you bring home a fourth one. Looks a lot more hopeful for me than when I watched T1 in 2019. As Chovy finds himself alone here, we'll be able to get out, but that's going to be a dead turret. And, I mean, we are just, it almost feels like this game as last game is a formality. And we questioned it in the draft. The draft is almost the same. Yes, there are some small changes. I like the Braum tweak. The Olaf got them an early Drake with that prior they had bot side. But otherwise, in terms of team fights here, the Lissandra has been working as intended against Chovy. He hasn't been able to look for picks. Kana's Nar has been great.
And I mean, not for the reasons I was hoping he was going to play it, right? The reasons where, you know, later on, if Hanwha's ahead or you have an even game, it gives you a little bit more engage. No, he's just controlling the, the mid game just fine and shutting down a lot of opportunities Hanwha life have to, to look for picks, to look for anybody. And it's a well-oiled machine and a, a T1 that had so many subs all year long. Gumiusi swapping with Teddy. Zayas, the new rookie player who could be here over Khan if his performance were maybe a little bit more consistent. You know, Cuz as well in the jungle. But this is the roster they ended up with, and this is the roster looks like they're headed to the semis with. Yeah, I'm saying that this was the right roster as well yeah. based on uh, today's performance. This has just been a masterclass from T1. I mean, we can be talking about Harmalife Esports and how they look like a shadow of what they looked uh, in the group stage. Maybe we're getting an idea of just the power level difference between these two groups, something like that. But honestly, it feels like there has just been a collapse of Harmalife. Life. And uh, it's sad to see. I think a lot of people were expecting this to come earlier. So it's, you know, you still need to congratulate Hamwa for, for making it out of the group stage just in general, but I think a lot of people dared to hope for more from this team. The Zona taking a bit of damage from Chovy, but not going to be too worried about it, actually. Okay, Lantern's not going to save him, but he is able to walk his way out as now Carrier doing the same thing. It's somewhat of a cool shower ending for Hanwha, you know, kind of really hitting reality very hard, where yeah. after what has been an overperformance ever since, they got to Gauntlet, and people dared to dream. They made it out of Gauntlet way more dominant over teams like Nongshim, which I think we all expected to be here instead of Hanwha. Then making it through groups with, admittedly, um, I think that the group could have looked completely different, of course, with Fnatic and everything that they went through. But still, they earned their spot, right? They looked, as you pointed out, they looked great against RNG at times, but we did see some of the issues. And against a team like T1 that clearly is very on point of how they want to play, how they want to move around the map, those issues are just... There's, there's a pinpointer on them, and, and you can't ignore them anymore, yeah. right? It's, it's just, you can't kind of outplay this away. You, some of these things that Hanwha Life need to evolve, you can't evolve during one world championship of a tournament. It's going to take longer than that, and I, it's going to take a lot more time. We'll see if this roster stays together next year or not. Machovi's contract expiring at the end of the year, who knows? But I, I got to say, you know, for Willer, this is probably going to be one of the biggest learning experiences he'll ever have of his whole career. As Hanalei Esports don't have any vision on the Baron. They know what's being done, though. They're going to go through this choke point. Yeah, some scary guns on Gubiushi as well as the ult comes forward from Vista, trying to start this one off in their favor. It's not the steal, and it's just a dead Willer to start this one off. But at least Morgan dives on forward, takes out Faker, tries to drive by, but it's not going to work. Deft now going to be the focus. It's Gumiushi. That's so many Chakrams. He is terrifying on this Abelios. Vista going to get taken down. And now Ona parkours his way into this top lane. Deft a sitting duck right now. And it's the double kill to come through from the T1 jungler. And that, I think, was the last gasp from Humble Life Esports. And unfortunately, it was not very loud. Certainly not. And, I mean, look, you have to fight through a choke point here. The fact that they're able to trade Faker back is a testament to Morgan's patience, you know, throughout this game. He does go in there and help take Faker out, but the Red Bull power play, Baron power play, I should say. It's already 3.4K! Yeah. Uh, and it's going to get larger. This is going to be a Drake as well, controlled here. I mean, as Honda Life, look, you're walking through this choke point. The ultimate goes down on Nagumi Yusi, but he is not phased. And as you point out, Kronger, so many times, this team oh, is not all together on the so same close. pace. The, the cohesiveness isn't there, and then added to that, which is the third time in a row, this comp from Hanwha, they need a lead. You, We have seen these comps work if they get out early, but now, Carrier. Yeah, this is going to get hooked. Don't miss. Yeah, Carrier is just a little bit too good on this Thresh. As yeah, Faker is going to come on through, throws down the ultimate. That is going to be Soul Point now available for T1, but I don't know whether this game has another five minutes in it. As this inner turret's getting sieged up to check in on that Red Bull Baron power play. We're very close to 4K. And Fake is going to take down the inner turret in the mid lane. Same to be said for this bottom lane for the rest of T1. And we're going to head towards about that 5,000 mark. Harm Life, can they actually defend this is the question. I think the answer it's is almost a glaring no. As Kana walks on forward, he's got the Meganar, slows down Deft. No flash available here, though, so can't close the gap. But it doesn't matter. I mean, they're just obliterating the base of Hanwha Life Esports, and Hanwha just looks like they don't have a response. Chovy trying to look for a flank, but he has to sweep out all of this vision. And T1, they've got all of the answers. Gumiushi now with the Graviton, stuns up almost everyone by himself, gets the ulti out from Vista. 
And now Hanwha have to get back to their fountain. What, 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 what can you do? I mean, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. And this is again, it's a big change from what you want to do. Because look, that vision line that is there is to prevent the exact one in a million type scenario where you lose this game, right? Where Chovi gets the flank, blows up Gumayushi, gets the shutdown, and then a series of increasingly less likely events continue <laughs> yes. to transpire until we actually get to the I'm, Hanwha I'm sure win. there is a universe in the multiverse where that Naturally, has happened. Naturally, but, um, but I, don't... I think we're getting down to like single digit universes. <laughs> I don't um, think this is the possible. one, unfortunately. I mean, you know, sometimes the underdog wins, sometimes it's exciting, and sometimes you have the cool narrative and the, and the really awesome storyline that everyone remembers and everybody talks about. But sometimes T1 smashes you 3-0. <laughs> They return to form, and I, I hate to say it, but oh, no. I, don't, I don't think people will be talking about this series from years to come. But this is one of those series where you go, there were a lot of cool things that could have happened here, but they I didn't. Mean, they, they played a composition that needs to get ahead. They did not get ahead twice in a row, and T1 are just looking at the round of format. They're saying, we are a semifinalist team. Heck yeah, they are. They still need to uh, do a few of the formalities, which is destroying the enemy Nexus in you know your match point game of game number three. Um, but I think it is getting pretty close to just a formality at that stage. 10,000 gold the lead at 26 minutes in. I don't think that this will officially count as a shellacking um, if I was to talk to Jake Spawn Tiberi about it. However, this has been extraordinarily dominant. It has been, yeah. And it, the only saving grace, honestly, is the fact that, that right now there is no Baron buff or the Baron up. Uh, and there, there's, that's that early Drake. You know, Willow was actually able to pick that one up. <laughs> that bought you a couple of extra minutes. Are you looking for the positives? Is that what you No, doing? no, oh, okay, I okay. don't, I don't. It's like, well, he was able to get I mean, a track. Well, that that's what good. I, we talked about it earlier. Or, you know, I was kind of leading into this, but if you're ahead and you get that Drake, it's so powerful. But with this composition from behind, it, it means almost nothing, sadly. Especially no. because this is not a burst composition for T1. So even that extra, you know, resistance that you're going to get from that solo mountain Drake is just... I mean, it's in the almost, face of a three-item, soon-to-be four-item Gumiusi. It's almost four items on Aphelios, so I mean, it, it is kind of a burst comp, but it's also a DPS <laughs> comp, you <laughs> I know? Guess so. Because like his DPS, each each second is a burst window yes. of one of the Hanwha Every Life auto Esports is a burst players. window. <laughs> yeah. It's like wow. It's and a there it is, the rapid windows. fire Woo! cannon, so you can get that extra damage from further away. Oh no, the burst window comes even earlier. It's uh. I mean, as as Chovy here, what do you do? I mean, this is your... You're trying to be the leader of this team. You're trying to carry your... Yes, 50, 60 CS up on Faker, but... At, at what point does the, the burst window stop being a window and becomes like... Oh, yeah. Like a wall? Maybe it's a, a burst hallway. Yeah. That's or like one of those cool is, glass right? ceilings. Maybe, uh, think, maybe like a... There's no glass ceiling. This is a Felios. <laughs> doesn't have a ceiling. It's a very good point. It does not exist too many years. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess maybe it's 200. Maybe that's <laughs> minions. I don't know. He's got teleport, but you've got no wards to teleport onto here. you got no angles. All T1 have to do is group up as five and start this Baron, which will disappear faster than you, you could blink an eye. Once again, no vision for Hanwha IP Sports. We're gonna watch the same fight happen again. Maybe this time the miracle can occur. Cause I mean, you are praying for a miracle if you're a Hanwha IP Sports fan. Tournament life on the line here. I don't know, man. Even a miracle may not be enough here as Hanwha, they don't even get towards the pit. The Baron is secured. Will are now down extraordinarily low. It says he's unstoppable, but it's looking pretty stoppable right now. It's gonna be Ushi's dominating as he takes down the jungle of Hanwha. Now running for the hills as quickly as possible. Decent disengage ult from Vista as Chobi dives into the back line. Gets exhausted though straight away. Morgan with the Dominus gets on top of Gumiushi, but there's so much peel and he is gonna be okay. Lantern thrown out for Faker as Chobi flashes himself out of the way. Morgan doing the same thing as Ona goes golden. Vista and Depth still alive for the moment. But the talent the has base. found Avaris, and yes, the base is being absolutely destroyed. Chovy now on the wrong side, and this is going to be the ace almost, as Morgan, the only one left remaining. But Nexus turrets aren't going to be here, and T1, they are just looking to end this game right here and put Harmer Life Esports out of their misery. Canna. It was uh, staying there for quite some time, but honestly, he probably can, as the rest of T1 are going to turn up. 
This game would have already been over if Faker was to get to was actually able to finish his teleport. He was teleporting to the bot side wave, but Chovy interrupted him. It doesn't even matter yeah, though. It's heroic, but it's not going to matter. T1 will 3-0 Harmon Life Esports. They wanted to do this in the world's gauntlet. Thankfully, they got a second try, and damn, second time was the charm. T1 advanced to the semifinals in the most dominant fashion, I think, an international competition of League of Legends could even imagine. And I gotta say, I think Hanoi Life Esports fans are disappointed with the result. You go 0-3, but not only do you get dominated in three back-to-back -back games, but you try the same draft twice, and both times it fails hard. And Chovy, his last moments in this tournament will be interrupting Faker's teleport, trying to look for the kill on his longtime rival here in the LCK. Unable to get the kill, unable to close out the series. And it's a, it's a rough losing streak here for Hanoi Life Esports. Remember, they lost that last game. It could have been the first seed, might have had a different opponent. That last game that they lost, where Chobi died in mid next to the inhibitor, is, you know, what led to this matchup, which led to a 0-3, and it's a tragic loss. I, had, I hate to say it, but it really is for some of these legends. Deft, a true veteran of League of Legends. Yeah, but I think uh, if you're Hama Life Esports, you can still hold your head high, right? This is a team that managed to do pretty well in the spring final uh, in the spring playoffs, right? That was and it. And <laughs> then completely collapsed in summer. Yep. And to make Worlds knockout stage in the summer split because you got 50 championship points and managed to use them after ending up eighth in summer, that's pretty cool. Right, I, I think that they can definitely hold on to that one. There's, there's two lessons here. Uh, unfortunately, it's another year where Chovy and Deft don't make it out of quarters, and T1, they look incredible. T1 just looking absolutely amazing. But with that game, T1 have secured their place in the semifinals and have eliminated Hummel Life Esports from Worlds 2021. Coming up, we've got Worlds Cooldown with Dracos, and we'll check in with Shox, standing by with the one and only Faker on the ground in Iceland a little later on. Uh, I didn't order any pizza. Jake from State Farm. After you saved me so much dough on insurance with that Parker promo, I devised a promo for you. Here's the deal, Parker. State Farm offers everyone surprisingly great rates. Yeah, right. Pepperoni pockets, an atomic brownie, cuckoo crusty. There's no promo, it's just great rates. And a cider ranch. You're the man, man. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.